Hi, it's Money44 here and today I invite you to the review of the Spetsna Arms SA46 LMG replica. Spetsna Arms with this series of polymer LMG core replicas makes the word light take on a slightly more literal meaning. At the same time causing a bit of controversy, because for many people LMG in airsoft starts above 7 kg. But in today's material, we'll take a closer look at the SA46 model, we'll see how it looks up close, how it disassembles, what's in the gearbox and what performance it has. But as standard, let's start with a small unboxing. The replica comes to us in a very large printed cardboard box with a handle, inside we'll find manual, general recommendations for using the replica, cleaning rod, front grip for the wrist rail, 2.5 thousand BB box magazine, and of course the SA46 replica, let's take a closer look at it. The replica with folded stock measures approximately 84 cm and with fully extended stock it measures approximately 92 cm. With a box magazine the replica weighs more than 5.6 kg. The replica is mostly made of reinforced polymer, the only external elements made of metal, apart from screws and pins, are the outer beller with flash hider, bipod and its mounting, all the wrist rails on the front, a barrel release lever, magwell, trigger and trigger guard, and the buffer tube. On the other side of the replica we'll find a metal reloading handle guide and its cap. The rest of the replica is made of reinforced polymer. This reduces the weight, but I did not notice any negative impact on the stiffness of the replica. First of all, there is no impression that the replica is about to fall apart. I would even say that it makes a fairly solid impression. Going from the front, we find a metal flash hider. After unscrewing it, we'll see a 14mm counterclockwise thread, so we can mount a silencer, for example. Going further, we find a built in metal bipod. To open it, just squeeze the legs together. The bipod offers a total of 3 positions folded, unfolded, and set forward. The height of the bipod can be adjusted by pressing the lock. We have three heights to choose from. The metal front offers a lot of space for additional accessories, but also hides a place for the battery. Pull out the bottom cover downwards and you will see the wiring with fuse ending with a small tummy up lock. Unfortunately, there is quite little space for such a large replica and I managed to stuff only a 11.1V Turnigi Nanotech 1200mAh LiPo with TDS adapter. So I decided to add an extension and put it on top so I have easy access to the battery. I can even fit an 1800mAh battery or bigger here. The replica has a quick access system to the barrel, just press the barrel release lever and it will pop forward. Now we can pull out the outer and inner barrel together with the hop-up chamber, a very useful function when the jam occurs mid-game. In order to put the barrels back into the replica, I recommend that you first install the inner barrel, you need to hit the tab on the chamber in the notch in the replica. When mounting the outer barrel, I recommend that you press the barrel release lever in the final phase and then push the barrel. The fastening element on the barrel is made of polymer and it's not worth damaging it by forcefully pushing the barrel in. Both the front and rear side are made of polymer and are non-adjustable. The set includes a plastic box magazine for 2.5 thousand BBs with electric drive. To get inside, just remove the side, it's held on two notches. The magazine is powered by two AA batteries, despite its size the place for BBs is in the upper part. We can fill it through the small door in the upper part of the magazine, but a more convenient way in my opinion is to pour the BBs directly into the chamber after removing the side. The magazine has two modes of operation, auto in which it spins all the time while feeding BBs, and 
and sound control. In this mode, Meg will feed when it detects loud sounds thanks to the microphone installed in the feeder. Additionally, we have a 3.5mm jack input for an external button. I'm not able to say how long the batteries will last, but the replica has already been with me on two games and fired a total of about 6000 BBs, and the batteries are still able to wind up the magazine. In order to attach the magazine to the replica, first connect the feeder to the magwell, and then attach the magazine to the lower catch. To remove the magazine, first detach the magazine from the lower catch, and then detach the mag feeder from the magwell. The replica also works with the standard Stanek magazines used in the AR-15 family of replicas. I tested SMAC magazines, mid-cap Spesna arms for 70 BBs, high cap from GNG Predator, high cap from SAH-12, and high cap from SAB-12. All magazines feed and feed BBs. In case of some like SMAC, they had to be forced in and placed for them to work. To get to the hop-up adjustment, we have to lift the bolt cover. It's locked with two buttons on the rear part, which you just need to press and you can lift the cover up. Here we have access to the hop-up chamber. To adjust it, turn the knob to the left to increase the power, and by turning the knob to the right will reduce it. In the replica we have only one firing mode, that is continuous fire, so the replica does not have a fire selector, but only a safety. When the safety on the left side is engaged, the trigger is blocked, and when it protrudes, the trigger is unlocked. SA-46 has an adjustable telescopic stock with 5 adjustment points. On the butt plate there is additional metal support, thanks to which the part of the replica's weight is transferred directly to the shoulder and allows for more comfortable use of the replica. The stock, especially in the full extended position, has a large play. Apart from the quick change barrel system, the replica also features a quick spring change system. To get to it, all you need to do is unscrew the rear pin, take out the pin itself and the whole stock will drop down showing a back of the gearbox. You need to lift the bolt cover and then press the spring guide and pull the top lock away and we can pull the spring guide with the spring. It's also easy to put the spring back into the replica. So let's see how to disassemble the replica and get to the gearbox. I will start by disassembling the outer barrel with the inner barrel as I showed earlier. I press the barrel release lever and pull everything forward. The outer barrel is made of metal, but the barrel mount is made of reinforced polymer. After a few disassemblies, you can already see traces on it, so I recommend that you always do it with the barrel release lever pressed, in order to not damage the mount. The brass inner barrel is 350mm long and has a metal rotary hop-up chamber mounted on it. I start disassembling the chamber by removing the o-ring blocking the knob. Now after turning the knob to the right place, I can take it off. In the meantime, knob fell out, it is mounted in this place. The next element is the clip. Now I can take out the barrel with the bucking from the chamber. The blue bucking you can see is not the original bucking mounted in the replica. Unfortunately, I had a lot of problems with the original one. First of all, its color was sticking out too much and the BBs got stuck on it. And secondly, the bucking after one game lost almost the entire patch. So I replaced it with a blue ENL bucking, which works very well and I didn't have any jamming on it even when using core BBs. This is the only element that I recommend replacing immediately in the replica. It's time to get to the gearbox. I start by removing the lower grip and disconnecting the Tamiya plug and the fuse from the wiring. Then using the 2.5mm allen bit, I unscrew two screws on the left side of the replica. Another two on the right side. And after the cocking handle is pulled back, one on the guide. I open the bolt cover and take off the cocking handle. 
Now what's left is to unscrew the rear pin nut and pull out the pin. Starting from the front of the gearbox, I pull it slightly up and it should be able to pull it out completely. Before disassembling the shell, I will pull out the spring guide with the bearing and the main spring. I start disassembling by unscrewing the Phillips screw from the cocking handle guide and taking it off. Then I detach the positive and negative cables from the motor and cut the zip tie holding the cables. The negative cable can be completely set aside. Now using the 2.5mm allen bit, I can unscrew 10 screws holding the shell halves together. I do not unscrew the 2 screws holding the micro switch. Then I can carefully pull off the halves of the shell, taking care of the wirings passing through it. For a mileage of around 6000 BBs, the shell is quite clean. There is not too much lubricant. I would even say that everything is properly lubricated. The ball bearings on which the gears rotate have a diameter of about 8mm, but their construction differs from the standard bearings found in ASG replicas. They look quite durable. The gears used in the replica are a standard set with a gear ratio of 18 to 1. The bevel gear has 4 anti-return teeth, and the sector gear does not have a delayer installed. The set is correctly shimmed and spins quite nicely. The gears are powered by a normal short motor. If I had to bet on the first thing that fail, I think it's the motor. Let's look on the pneumatics. The piston has a full metal rack, but the last two shown signs of increased wear. The polymer piston head has six ventilation holes and does not have a bearing. The polymer cylinder head has a fairly hard rubber bumper, a large gasket that seals well and a brass nozzle. The polymer nozzle is about 21 mm long and has no sealing. The tappet plate is made of quite hard plastic. Despite the relatively short barrel, the replica has metal zero type cylinder. The seal of the system is very good. What is interesting, despite the lack of the seal of the nozzle, the system even with the extended nozzle keeps its seal. It loses it only when the nozzle is inserted. The replica uses a micro switch instead of a standard contacts. After opening it, it looks like this, and honestly, I thought that after two games with 11.1 volt LiPo, there will be more wear visible on the contacts, but it looks like new. Nevertheless, I must add here that it happened to me several times that the micro switch stuck together and the replica fired even after releasing the trigger. We know what the replica looks like inside. Now it's time to chrono it. I chronoed the replica on 0.28g BBs by Spesta Arms and through Niji Nanotech 11.1V 1200mAh LiPo battery. The hop up is set. The average result is about 1.33 joules and 321 FPS. Calculated for 0.2g BBs, for which the manufacturer declares about 400 FPS, gives us about 379, so a bit less than declared. The rate of fire is about 14 BBs per second. I also shoot the replica on 0.28g BBs from Special Arms, and because I filmed the review after two games, it already has a blue E and L bucking. At distance of 30 meters, there is no problem hitting the target with quite good grouping. It is similar at 40 meters. Fifty meters distance is also not a big problem, although you can see the BBs are slightly blown to the left. At 60 meters, the spread is visibly bigger, but still most of the shots hit the target. 
I think that by using heavier BBs, the excess air could be used and the range will be slightly increased. SA-46 is made largely of polymer, but there are also many metal parts. The build quality is good and apart from large play on the stack, there is no need to look for any particular play on other elements. The replica has a quick access system to the barrel, as well as quick spring chain system. Only there could be more space for the battery. Internally, the replica does not fail. We get a strong gearbox shell in which the installed pneumatics works well with fairly good seal. The gears are properly shimmed and everything is equally properly lubricated. The only thing that can worry is the visible wear on the last suit on the piston, and fairly weak motor. Internally, the biggest problem is the hop-up backing that cause problems and get damaged after one game. This is an element that I personally recommend to replace immediately. A blue backing from ENL will work very well here. When it comes to performance, we achieve a bit less on the chronograph that the manufacturer declares, but the performance itself, even on the standard backing when it worked, was good. And after replacing it with ENL, a range of up to, up to 60 meters was achievable. Also, I feel that on a heavier BBs it could be even better. So for whom is the SA46 or any other LMG from the Core Series for? In my opinion, it can be a good addition to our arsenal, when we occasionally want to run with something else other than assault rifle. Additionally, the lower weight can be helpful in case of long use of the replica on larger games or mill sims, of course if the rules do not contain the minimum weight of the replica. Personally, I had a replica with me on two games and I fired about 6000 BBs and had a blast. The ability to shoot them in long bursts and literally flood the opponent with the BBs has its advantages. But I will also not lie to you, it was a lot of fun. Providing that our wallet survives the price of a pack of BBs per game or more. The replica of course is not perfect. Its biggest problem is the hop-up backing, which in my model was sticking out and causing problems. From what I learned, there is a plan to change it to another one in next batches, but if necessary, I recommend simply replacing it. I've tested the blue ENL backing and it worked very well. For today, it will be all. Let me know what you think about SA46 present today and if you have one, how it's working for you. And for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.